The man tossing it, Carl Hess. Ohio State and Florida for the national championship. And Hess worked the first game, Billy. Back December 23rd in Gainesville, the one won by the Gators. Convincingly, 86-60. That's Horstman taking the jumper outside, and Lewis with the rebound as the Buckeyes boxed. The first thing we saw there, they were playing man-to-man -man Ohio State, and, and Odin did not come out to try to help out and stay away from foul trouble where he's been in trouble going outside on the perimeter defensively. Quick shot by Lewis, who struggled with his shot at this cavernous arena on Saturday. It's Noah. Working on Harris, they're not going to count the basket, but they're going to whistle the call against the senior from Springfield, Ohio, Harris. Jim, this is why I thought Ohio State would start in his own, because Harris has given up an awful lot of size to Noah. It's a tough, tough matchup. Noah's down inside, easy on Lewis now. Could have been maybe an easy get there, but a steal instead. It's Conley with Humphrey trying to defend at the first points of the championship game to the Buckeyes of Ohio State. Brewer right back, wing, and he bangs home a three. And just as he did the other night, a tremendous start for Brewer. Brewer is going to be on Lewis. So Green and Conley. And another whistle down low. And this call is against Horford. <laughs> how, how about this, Richard off the bench immediately. Now they rotate those three with Richard coming off the monster performance. Seven of seven from the field against UCLA, 16 points. But Jim, that's something I didn't want to see early in the game. The referee's calling ticky tack fouls in tight. Got to let the big guys play at talent level here. Didn't want to see that Saturday either, but they certainly monitored that one a little too close for my comfort. Here's Harris, and he hits the three. And Jim, how about Conley? Takes it inside, never is in a hurry. As Coach Wooden always said, be quick, but don't hurry. Well, he personifies that perfectly. The high give to Noah. Work it outside. Brewer going to launch it again. And two Buckeyes battling for it. Oden Good saves hustle. It. Good hustle by the big man. Well, this issue you talk about, Billy, will they let the big guys play? That really, the biggest concern on the floor, that would have to be for Ohio State. And can Odin stay in the game this time? Well, you can see what Richard's doing. I think Billy Donovan said, if they're going to call it tight, we're going to bring Richard in there quickly, and maybe I can use three or four fouls on Richard before I bring Horford back in the ball game. Odin with only 20 foul plague moments or minutes in the game against Georgetown. He misses his first attempt here tonight. Green. Short. Green really beat him up pretty good in the game of Gainesville. Had 24 to top the Gators. He did, but he did not have a good game against UCLA. Carlson gave him all kinds of trouble. Great job defensively that time as Noah tried to go up with it, and Harris took it away. Lewis hoping to find his shot, but not this time. Stolen by Noah. That numbers. Humphrey. Have to give it up here as he drives in for the layup. You know, Humphrey is not a guy that's a big finisher. I think Harris should have tried to go and block that shot. It would be one thing if you've got Brewer on the wing or you've, or you've got Noah on the wing, but you're not going to have a finish by Humphrey. That was blockable. Richard really using that body on the inside on Odin. Harris again. This time for the senior. Green comes down low for the rebound. A lot of speed in that little matchup. Point guards, Brewer. Turns, twist, miss. And again, Harris very active on that yeah, end he, of the floor. He, he was. Noah should have been ready to go ahead and rebound that from the weak side. And there goes the man again. Conley goes the distance. Noah's exhausted right now. He's trying to get a second breath. He's looking for Billy Donovan to get him out of there. He's really winded right now. Donovan already has taken Horford out. He doesn't want to take Noah out at this point. Going to bring in Walter Hodge. Horford's going to come back in as well. Hold that foul on Conley. And trying to repeat. Oklahoma State the first to do so. Duke the last. And of course that 1960s stretch that spilled into the 70s for UCLA. That's Beyond description. Yeah, there's some real people there. Bob Curlin, the great first big man in college basketball, leading Oklahoma State. Coach Iva, he was the guy that got it all started with repeats. Not with the long shot. Curlin is here tonight in attendance. Was here for the Hall of Fame announcement earlier today as Roy Williams of North Carolina.
was one of those announced. Going in, there's open with a little finger roll, and the big center is on the board. And there, people said, well, you know, I wonder how he liked using the left hand while he couldn't use the right. He showed you how right there. It's been amazing how he has changed now that he's got two hands, but his stats are about the same as the game goes on. We'll get into that a little bit. You notice how he's not coming out on a hedge move. Green gets by. There's no one there for the last stand. Now, that is something that Billy Donovan has picked up right away. Odin normally comes out there to help when there's a solid screen on the guard. He's not doing it now, so it allows Green to go right over that solid screen inside. But they don't want Odin getting in trouble on the perimeter. Harris jammed over to Butler. Down low, Lewis, Humphrey trying to defend, and he got him from behind. We reach our first break. The national championship game is underway. Connolly has four. Brewer hits another one from the outside. He was boxing out. Did you notice that? And Connolly's sitting down, Billy, coming out of this break. They bring in Daquan Cook, the freshman. Top six man in the Big Ten this year. Good hands by Odin. But Brewer oh, now oh. reaches in. Is he quick? Odin not used to seeing a guy 6'9 that quick out on him. As I said, Brewer can guard any five players on the floor. Great shot by Hodge. Now they take Conway out with Hodge on the floor. And you know, Jim, guys are sitting in, and Florida goes to a 2 3 zone even before. And, and Thad Mata said, no, I don't want to see this zone. He was going to call a timeout. His players didn't recognize well, him. Odin was down here signaling for it for a couple of seconds. Had the timeout signal high in the air. They've also brought in, talking about the Buckeyes, Othello Hunter, 45. And this man passing it is David Lighty coming off a big 25-minute performance. And it's Georgetown. Block shot. That was Brewer blocking an Odin shot from distance. Jim, he's listed at 6'9", and he's every bit that. But with his arm span, he's almost a seven-footer on the floor. And that's Horford. And on Hunter, trying out muscle him, and Oden able to just grab a flat-footed rebound. And Hunter, another guy with a long wingspan. Lighty goes corner, but he is fouled on the pass. And Noah's about to check back in to the Gator lineup. Well, we've got three freshmen on the floor. We've had a situation with five freshmen in a championship game with that Fab Five of Michigan, Jim. You remember two years in a row they made it, made it as freshmen with five on the floor. The only champion that ever had four freshmen on the floor was that Utah squad back in 1944. So Ohio State playing plenty of freshmen out here. Well, that Fab Five team of Michigan was to beat them, and that was the last time we had back-to-back -back championships. By a team as Cook scores on the inside. Cook did not have a good game on Saturday, Billy, but gets a, a confident start there. He missed a bunch of outside shots against the Hoyas. Jim, but he is a young man that can score. He had six 20 point games in the first 13 games Ohio State played this year. Now, he draws the foul on Hunter. This is the best matchup, though, that Ohio State can have with Hunter and Odin down low. Near the end of this game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team and to honor their determination and outstanding play, Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. America's brand supporting America's best Chevy the American Revolution. Two coming for Noah. There is that sidewinder shot of the MOP from last year. Jim, look up at the scoreboard. 13.38 to go. Odin is on the floor and doesn't have a foul. Which, you remember that the other day? It was a minute and 38 seconds. That too. He was sitting on the floor, with uh, sitting on the bench with two. Good sign for Ohio State. He averaged only seven minutes, Billy, of playing time in the first halves of the last three games. So, you see how Florida now trying to get a little bit of defensive pressure. Tough to get it on this man. Now Brewer, he's taking one away from Oden. He was trying to strip Conway this time. He's doubled up. And that's that width of Brewer, even for a guy like Conley, making it tough to get a passing angle. Boy, Oden wants it. He's got Noah on his back, and that's going to be one on Noah. The game is being called very close on the inside. Now, what Billy Donovan is trying to get it to be called close on the other end of the floor. Oden doing a really good job tonight staying out of foul trouble. But one of the things I think is available on the other end, if Oden's not going to come out to help on those solid screens, they're going to be jump shots for Ohio State. Oh, this is going to be one against Ohio State for pushing off, trying to gain position. It's a second on Hunter. A lot of touch fouls down in low. Referees not letting them play at all. The, the coaches and the players are going to have to respect that. Brings in Matt Terwilliger. 
You know, this is something today. Bill Walton, the great, who was here tonight as, as just a super fan, great supporter of college basketball. He said, you know, Billy, they went to three officials so many years ago, but they didn't up the number of fouls. We got Brewer first down. He's down on the baseline. And Tremendous Boy, pain. He really is in pain. You know what this reminds me of? A player of Brewer's status, Bobby Wilkerson going down in 1976 for Indiana when Bob Knight had an undefeated team ready to go for a national championship. Watch the right side of your screen here, Billy. He's as Brewer through. coming through. Just kind of gets an inadvertent elbow by Odin. Nothing uh, intentional whatsoever. You know, he's walking well, he it off now. Shot. Of course, you get hit by a man that's 276 pounds right in the chest, it'll hurt. I was going to say, though, they went to three officials in college basketball you know, a good 15 years ago, but they did not up the number of fouls. You know, the Big East for a while experimented with six. And that is, hurt their confidence. Is it time, though, for that to be a consideration? You got another set of eyes. People out there trying to justify their job. They're calling things so tightly. As Humphrey takes his first attempt. I've never understood why a guy has to be taken out of the game anyway. They're not in any other sport. I mean, never a <laughs> maximum just, number of fouls. Just go ahead and play. And maybe give an extra penalty bonus for a foul shot for the fouls he commits thereafter. Here's Odin. Over Horford. Traveled first. Traveled, but a pretty good move, and give Horford some credit for not pushing or trying to block the shot. <laughs> Brewer back in, so it was just a momentary injury for Brewer. It shakes it off. And how about Thad Mata talking to him, hoping that he's okay. Uh, great sportsmanship sign here by Thad. And the Florida starting five back on the floor. Now get if Horford sets a screen. Now watch what happens. Odin does not come out, so Green can get jump shots. Again, see he can get the jump shot. Oh, and he was fouled in the act of a three. This can be an offense all to its own for Florida. Set screens by Horford. Odin's not coming out. You get a jump shot very easily. We got more notably though the second foul on Conley. So the first one to get in a little foul trouble. No one serves college sports fans better than CSTV, the 24-hour college sports network from CBS Sports. To get CSTV, go to CSTV.com. So two on Connolly, Billy, and that's rather and large with 12-16 still to go in the first half. Jim, the reason it's a foul on Connolly, he's not getting help on the big guy in the hedge move to stop that. So he tries to fight his way over the screen, and doing that picks up the foul. So in an attempt to save Odin, it's really putting the guards in je jeopardy. Of course, Butler's going to come in, and he has all kinds of experience, Billy, playing the point prior to this year. Absolutely. So one more shot for Green. Again, he was fouled in the act of a three-point attempt. Green had a great game against Ohio State. He was 9 for 12 in that ball game. Showed tremendous leadership, 24 points. And Jim, but in that first game, 86 to 60, that score is not indicative of how well the Buckeyes played up to a point. Then uh, there was a 33-9 run by Florida, and that was the ball game. That game was 40-40 with 17 minutes to go in the game. Right. And then in the words of Thad Mono, we just panicked. We caved in, but we learned from it. Made us better, as you see. Hans got a hand in there to get the steal. Porter got the hook to him, and one. Ohio State has kept Odin out of foul trouble, but they haven't kept the guy that's even more of a key in a ball game like this, Conley, out of foul trouble. And you can see what Florida's doing. They're taking advantage of some shaky ball handling. That's on Conley's replacement. Well, Butler's a starter, but Butler just came in, returned for him, and Butler picks up his first. Hodge has a chance at the three-point play. You can't say enough for Conley's ability to handle the ball and set up the Ohio State offense. As I said, number one assist in the Big Ten, number one in assist turnover, turnover ratio in the Big Ten. His presence really missed now. Florida on a 12-2 run. Great move by Billy Donovan to press against this team that's losing their major ball handler. Down the lane and laying it in. It's Lighty. Has he come alive in this tournament, Jim? Oh, I'm telling you, he's gained confidence every game. Had that really big three-point play just with a tenth of a second to go in the half before the Tennessee game reached the half. It was a 20-point deficit when he made a game a little boost. Of course, they came all the way back to win by one. What a job he did on Jeff Green, the Big East player of the year Saturday. Here's Noah from the free-throw line. Got his shot. 
chance to go ahead and take the ball to you with a dribble, then score inside, left alone from 15 feet. He's not going to hurt you. There's the 2 3 zone. When they don't score, they go back to their zone. Butler, he wants it from the wing. Good shooter. And Brewer able to wrestle for the rebound. Not only get the rebound, but then he can push it up the floor. Good hustle by Odin. Odin got down the floor to prevent the pass inside to Noah. But the Gators have a big stretch going here. Gators 6 of 6 from the line. Buckeyes have not had an attempt to this point. Billy Donovan took his team on a retreat, Billy, over Labor Day weekend. Qualified as an international trip. He told his guys, Next year, it's going to be all about managing distractions. We are not defending anything. We're not the defending champions. They'll never take that away from us. We can go 0-29. They're never going to take that banner down. And that's been their attitude really all season long. This has nothing to do with what happened last year. We're not defending it. Tim, that was a good long timeout for Greg Oden. He was extremely tired and played 10 straight minutes without a foul. But he's going to be playing against three people tonight with Richard coming off the bench. He's out there and Bart is on him right now. Great block. Brings it right down and Brewer hits the deck. He just scuffed it with two hands. And he's all alone inside. Cook misses it. That would have been a sure. big boost for Ohio State. Great pass out. That's Butler. Three. Down and out. Butler shot. Tipped around by Odom. Eventually Green. Quick pass of Brewer from the corner. Yes, a second three on the night. That extra pass, Jim, always works in the game of basketball. This team is completely unselfish. They have five 1,000-point scores in that starting lineup. They have all five guys averaging double figures from 10-2 to 13-3. They'll give up the ball. It's amazing the spread. It's so minimal for yep. all five players in the scoring average. And they all went over a thousand within just a matter of weeks of one another. Here's Odin back in and doubled up the ducks. Odin having an outstanding ball game and really outstanding. We take consideration we're at the 930 mark. He does not have a foul on him and he's been able to play these continuous minutes playing actually against three different matchups. But there's what's available. I thought for sure he'd pick up a foul on that one that turned out to be a magnificent block. Well, he went up with two hands and needs a body. There's Richard trying to pick up a foul on him. And he does. Odin this time reaching in. He's getting For a his little first. tired. You can watch exclusive live video from Amen Corner at the Masters Amen Corner Live, plus play-by-play -play coverage of the entire field throughout the tournament, one hour prior to telecast Masters Extra. CBSSportsLine.com slash Masters Live and Masters.org. Atlanta, here the site. It's the home of Bobby Jones, and this week, of course, the course that he built just two and a half hours down the road. The Masters coming up. Jim, interesting foul shooting. You think it's such a critical aspect of the game. The number one foul shooting team in the country was Villanova. Ohio State was 129th in the country. Florida, they found themselves even further down the line in foul shooting. They were 175th in the year. You've got to go all the way back to 1952. Kansas is national championships the last team that led the nation in foul shooting it was also the national champ billy they brought in conley during the free throws so on the floor with the two fouls i'm surprised they haven't picked up full court like they were before with brewer on conley back to the starting five for the buckeyes or some know it the fat five coach doesn't like that he preferred to know it as the fat 12 is open shot rolls off the front of the rim made a nice move and Somehow that just hung up there forever. But look at how valuable Richard is. He's he's playing Odin, and Billy Duncan knows he's got five fouls to give there. He also is trying to beat him down the floor to wear him out. Big advantage to Florida. Odin better be careful here. That's going to be a travel call against Richard. They Odin. did what they wanted. They worked it down low to Richard on Odin. And you know what was interesting there? I was watching Billy Donovan. Even though it was a travel, he shook his head to Odin. Good play. He wants to make Odin have to work. And Odin's going to have to come out for the first time. Terrific job on his part. Oh, he doesn't want to come out either. Look at him. Showing some real heart here. Goes out with four points, four rebounds. To Williger takes his position. And Noah, meanwhile, also comes back in. Gators just keep shuttling in that rotation. Fresh bodies down low. What, what control. Now he knows he's got a man he can beat. And to take the three. Long rebound out to Harris. 
Jimmy took the three, but he's only made 23s on the whole year. Here's Butler. Here's Kotlin. Back it away. Now going into Terwilliger. Tries to whip it. Does. Butler back out high. Harris, three. Ohio State has got to make those threes. I thought Noah touched that last, but that's not the case. That was off to Williger. Ohio State Billy only one of seven from behind the arc. Odin, one foul so far. A good start. He's on the bench for the first time. Ohio State's last appearance in the championship game, 1962. Five years before Thad Mata was born. It's been, in fact, 12,795 days ago. Towards Florida, back-to-back -back years. Terrific first half by this young man of playing consecutive minutes, staying out of foul trouble, doing a good job offensively and defensively. Looks like he's asking Mata to go back in the ball game after that rest. Yeah, he's going to go check in. Well, Billy Ohio State played in the first ever national championship game, 1939. Lost that game to Oregon to the 12 furs as Horford uses the left hand off the glass. And uh, Thad Mata can't get Odin back in the ball game quickly enough. Florida now with its largest lead. The gap is eight. Conley moves down low, goes out high. Well, he can find a way through he, traffic, though. He really can. Twitter should have been ready to take a little jump shot there. He had a wide open foul shot, really. And Lewis struggling offensively, but not with that move. That is right past him in the area of Noah. You know, I think he surprised Noah there with a the layup on that side of the basket. I think Noah was waiting for him to go up and under and ready to make the block. Caught him, yeah. Caught him off guard. Yeah, caught him off guard. Humphrey has not been able to get off a jump shot tonight, and I think he can get one if they set a solid screen on his man. There's where Noah wants to operate from. Yeah. No call underneath. Harris. Beautiful. Bounce pass to Willie. What an assist. Jimmy is always under control. He dribbles so low, low to the floor, keeps those eyes up. He really understands not only where the, his four teammates are, but what the defense is presenting to him. Just a terrific guard. You see why the freshman set the all-time Ohio State single season mark for assist as Terwilliger hammers Horford. And he'll head to the line for a couple. And Odin will be coming back in on the floor now, Billy. How about his early play? I think it's been outstanding, particularly in the fact that he's overcome foul trouble and he showed great stamina playing the first 12 minutes without getting any substitution at all. Jim, I mentioned about him. He did not play in the first six games of the year. Then he played the next 20 games left-handed, averaged 15.5 points and that, and 61% field goals and 62% foul shooting left-handed. Now he comes back for the last... 10 games, and he averages almost exactly the same thing playing two-handed. But I think the fact that he played against stronger competition, certainly at the end of the Big Ten schedule, and what he's done in the tournament, it's just kind of amazing that he played as a one-handed player and had those kind of stats. He's in for Terwilliger, and Noah takes the seat. As Richard returns, one of two for Horford. Ohio State with Odin down briefly at a plus-two game. On the Gators. And you can see what Billy Donovan's doing. He's going to have Richards playing him all the time, banging, push him, hold him, try to get fouls on him. There he is. Richards. Beautiful shot fence. A little flat. And a great block out by Richards. You notice he didn't try to go for the rebound. His job was to keep Odin off the, off the re offensive rebound. Here's again what they want. Horford trying to draw something. Fade away shot. Not blocked, but altered by Odin. Get the rebound by Odin. Harris, he'll take it, and he gets a second one on the night. They call him Microwave because he can heat up quickly. And he's showing some signs at both ends of the floor tonight of being very productive. Yep, he had five of eight threes for 17 points against North Carolina early in the year. And Humphrey hits the three, the all-time NCAA tournament leader in three-point baskets. He made that mark on Saturday, surpassing Bobby Hurley. He's 44 now in his career in tournament play. That's a breakdown mentally by Conley. you got to get on Humphrey, make him drive to the basket. They begin on a favorite offensive maneuver. And as Richard with the elbow yep. in his back. And for Richard, that's going to be his second. Tonight, Dave's bringing his A game.
to the Late Show with stupid human tricks and a whole lot more tonight on Dave. But Jim, we're not seeing stupid human tricks right now. What we're seeing is Billy Donovan trying to get Richards in a situation where he's swapping fouls with Oden. Look at Richards, all he's doing is blocking out, keeping a body on him, trying to wear him down. Noah brings down the Butler misfire from the corner. Billy Donovan would like to have Horford and Noah foul free and with good resources. There he goes again, just trying to get a foul on him. And a block by Oden, his second. It was Odin the first time these two played. It was pretty fresh on his comeback. And Brewer, a difference maker again. He's got now three from the outside tonight. Jim, beautiful follow through on that shot. We had the perfect angle on it. He stayed right with it. Just a great play on his part. He's got three of the four Gator shots from outside. Humphrey the other. Four or five threes against UCLA the other day. Look at who's playing Odin, Brewer. And that's Harris unable to make another one from out there. Odin's getting tired, Jim. He's having a hard time getting back up and down the floor. And he had to wonder if that might be the case for as long as he went at the start. Yep. Almost 12 minutes. Here's Green. That's a three. And Florida has a double-digit lead. Fad Mata needs a timeout. He's going to take one. His team is extremely tired that he has on the floor right now. Seven different Florida players have scored, and Green's three-pointer puts them up 11. Jim Nance with Billy Packer here at the Georgia Dome, and coming up, AT&T at the half, Greg Clark and Seth. First-half analysis, plus Dick Enberg will have some first-hand observations on this year's NCAA tournament and the awarding of the AT&T Naismith Player of the Year coming up on AT&T at the half. We noted in the under-12 timeout coming out of that, Billy, and the trend continues with the free-throw line. You talk about the disparity here. No attempts still for Jim, the Buckeyes. 10 for Florida. I think that's Thad Mata's strategy somewhat because Florida had 28 attempts against Butler, 43 against Oregon, and 31 against UCLA. So if you're going ahead and scouting these teams, say, guys, we got to keep them off the foul line. So instead of maybe that block early in the game, remember I talked about Humphrey? Maybe that has been the strategy. Let's keep them off the line, even though they're not a great free throw shooting team. Conley on a hesitation. That shot off and retreat by Odin. Yes, watch him play. Here's Lewis. The door in his face. Conley inside. Noah Odin puts it back. Noah had a hand in there to influence the Conley shot, but Odin aggressively went after it again. All that started by Conley going ahead and penetrating on the inside. And Jim, you know, that floater shot of his, as you pointed out, he shoots it to try to make it. But he knows that Odin and he are so used to playing against each other. That Odin is going to be there for the offensive rebound if he misses it. That ended a nine-point run by the Gators. They've had a 12-point run and a nine-point run already. Horford. Noah tip. Horford and Noah, neither one has a field goal in this ball game. Harris again underneath, giving them another presence inside, but it's Brewer picks his pocket. No one's going to catch him. And there is the one thing that Conley cannot overcome. And that is being defended by a seven-footer who's quick enough to stay in front of him. Those long arms of Brewer are amazing. Brewer with 11 points. The lead is 11. Now it's Noah on Odin inside. Look at, look at the intensity. Awesome to watch. And they're going to call the foul first. No basket. The eyes of Noah as oh, he was defending. He loved that challenge. That's one thing you like about him. He is a competitor supreme. That's the second on Noah. Billy, look at how Odin stacking up against the two big guys from Florida. We don't have Richard included. His picture could be over here. Jimmy's played 16 of the 18 minutes. Now, that's something very unusual for him. Give him credit for having done that. But there is some method in Billy Donovan's madness right here. He's going to play the three guys against him and say, I don't know what Odin looks like playing 35 minutes in a game. He has never proven that he can do that, and I'm sure that's what Billy Donovan is trying to make him do tonight. Larry Spates is on him right now. His he, first action at the Final Four. He, he can commit five fouls. Odin takes advantage of that matchup over the freshman from St. Petersburg, Florida. But Billy Donovan's strategy is uh, very clear. He is going to try to wear him down and try to get him to pick up a cheap five. You just wonder, can it get to the half with only one? 138 to go. There he is. With eight points after that shot, Horford left alone. 
It's very difficult now. Odin is not sure whether he should go out on the hedge move or stand back, and that allows Horford to have a wide open, basically, foul shot. Huntley rifles it, corner, Harris. And that's gonna be on Spates, who just came in. Now, one, th one thing about Odin, he is a guy that can shoot some free throws, made six straight fouls left-handed against Northwestern. Helping soldiers phone home tomorrow how two teams saw a need and ended up touching the lives of thousands of U.S. troops and their families. CBS Evening News with Katie Couric. It's going to be a one and one. So for the Buckeyes, their first free throw of the night comes with 118 left in the half. And they'll get one more. Very nice rotation on the shot. To me, you know, Jim, he never complained a bit and just uh, shot those shots left-handed with his free throws, made no complaints. I've watched him work on it in practice, knowing that he was not going to be a left-handed free throw shooter once that right wrist was okay, but he really dedicated himself. Kind of a special kid. And a three-point seven student also. There is Green, and that's a tough shot. He had guys flying past him. That's the whole offense that Florida can run all night long. Odin is not going to come out to pick up that foul, and therefore the jump shot is going to be available to any Florida player that wants to take it. Florida's hit its last five threes. Oh. And when he dunks it, he brings the rim to eye level yep. every time. Well, Spates, uh, just uh, without much experience, didn't know how to play that play. You've got to go ahead and let somebody shoot the ball. Make Odin go ahead and earn his. And Odin better be careful. Spates will go back out to Humphrey. I'm surprised that Florida's not setting solid screens for Humphrey. Chase down Butler. Saves it to Harris. Buckeyes can take the last shot. They're down 11. Very important now. Conley is not in the game, so Butler takes over the point guard position, normally what Conley would be doing. Florida fans rise to their feet. One and one last stand before the half. With five seconds, it's Butler. Using the glass, too strong. Spates pulls it down. Outlet, Brewer, he'll launch it. Big foot. And we reach halftime of the championship game. Now, when they met 100 days ago, Ohio State came out. This was down to Gainesville and scored the first nine of the second half. But also, a year ago, Humphrey, we saw it Saturday, he comes out ablaze to begin the second half, and Odin takes advantage right away with Horford on his back. Surprising, nobody doubling down. I think that once Odin starts to make his move, he's not going to pass that ball out. He'll pass it out quickly, but very seldom after he starts his move, Florida may have to start doubling down on him. No, no. Big step to the basket and a soft shot. His first basket of the game. Harris has no defense against Noah when he backs him down inside and use that little curl move. Look at this, Noah on Conley now, stays away from him. Well, that's not a matchup you could have predicted. Nope. Now Lewis, outside the free throw line, hits the jumper. Big shot for Lewis right there. Good step back jumper. Brewer normally pretty good at staying with a man on that, but was out of position there. Harris tips it to Conley up ahead. Lewis, watch Lewis out the block. What a defender he is, but Lewis says, not this time. That jump shot really helped Lewis a lot. First half, no activity from him at all. And Jim, prior to Saturday, he had had three straight 20-plus point games. Huge lift for Ohio State. Oh. See, here's that play I'm talking about. If they do that for Humphrey, Humphrey's going to get a bunch of jump shots. It's a jump instead, Horford. Tipped out, again Harris. Good active. block out. Tips it over to Conley. And Bounce pass up. inside to Harris. And the shot almost drops. That'll be the third on Noah. Noah did not hustle back court. Harris did a tremendous job blocking him out on the other end. And then just hustled down court to get over. I thought that we might have an opportunity there to see a block on Lewis. The Brewer never attempted. Just like in the first half, look at Noah breathing so heavily, Jim. He gets so emotionally fired up that sometimes I think he just needs to sit down to get his second breath. So Harris to shoot two. Again, that's the third on Noah. Thad Mata, head coach of the Buckeyes, trying to become the youngest head coach to win a championship since, can you believe this? Jim Valvano, 1983. Right, Branch McCracken, the all-time youngest. One leading Indiana with a championship when he was just 31 years of age. 
Harris, one of two. Brewer, so quick. Lewis may have shoved him, got away with it. Followed up by Richard. Odin usually gets that rebound, but a good block out by Richard never allowed Odin to get to it. First Florida dunk of the night, first basket for Richard. Coming off a 16 against UCLA. Nice help by Horford, but nobody on Odin. Harris had a great look there. Should have wild with the shot. Should have passed it. Odin was wide open inside. Brewer up quick with it. Oh. And Harris races down to the other end to get the board. Conley with Brewer trying to defend. Too strong tap. No. Conley keeps it alive. On the floor, it's Florida. No numbers. Brewer trying to create and a reach in call coming up against Butler. Here we're seeing now there you see that Odin Richards did such a great job. Boy, he is powerful at about 275 pounds. Odin doesn't run into many guys on the college level that are that strong. Richard just blows his man out. That's a foul. He was wide open. Oh, he, well, the reason man, was, he was. I know. He, <laughs> he, he shoved the guy. I was about to say. <laughs> shoved him. He almost took Lewis's head off. But again, Billy Donovan willing to use some fouls by Richard. That's three on Richard, three on Noah. So it's getting a little serious over there, Billy. Yeah, but they're, they're wanting to wear Odin down and hope that he picks up one of those push fouls. Butler is off the screen. Very tough shot. And Brewer pulls it down. How about his versatility? Yeah, he just can go so many ways. He's a great ball handler. There's a hold on Lewis. Grab the shirt. Brewer's got his shirt out now. Let's see if the referee makes him put it in. There he did. what he told him. Hodge comes back in. You know, and it might have been the reason, Jim, for that foul. Brewer was trying to fight around, but the shirt got loose, and he just put his arm out and grabbed it. My partner, Billy Packer, doing a good job with the fashion police. <laughs> Officials as well. Horford. You look right now, fires it. Got it. Well, see, Odin is not going to come out. He's just going to camp down inside. Horford will get much more confidence on that shot, and he's going to start looking to take him. Comes the back end, but no double down. See this? Ah! Horford blocks it. Odin the second time. I'm really surprised from a scouting report. When Odin puts the ball on the floor, he is not going to then pass out. But Florida is not doubling down when he puts it on the floor. Now the matchup at the other end. Will he try to draw the foul? Okay. Yep. Ah! Leaves his feet, blocks it. Odin just job. slapped it away, but on the floor, Horford saved it back. Richard now. Way outside. Humphrey comes it in. Oh, boy. He is not the all-time NCAA leader for nothing, Jim. Right. Boy, you give him the open look, and you're in serious trouble. That's why I, I thought that they'd set screens on his man and just let him take jump shots. And they're now 7 of 11 from the perimeter. Odin again. Horford down inside. Odin takes him. Muscling it in. This is the best. Now, you've seen Odin play a lot this year. This has got to be well, the best you've ever seen him. Absolutely, because he's having an opportunity to stay on the floor and get in some kind of rhythm. But, Jim, he's breathing heavily. I don't know if he can go a couple of more minutes without getting some relief. Odin with 17 points. Eight already in this half. And a timeout called by the Gators, which will give Odin a little spell. That probably helps Odin, to be quite honest with you. 49-40, Gators. Well, you can draw a line right past Odin here and put him up against the three rotating big guys. He has outscored them and almost matched them in rebounds. What about the defense on Odin here? Well, I'm really surprised, as I said before, once he puts the ball on the floor, that there's not some kind of double-down tactic on him, but he's quick. He's got excellent footwork on the inside. Billy Donovan is saying, I realize he's played some 30-minute games, but I'm going to make him play this one 30 minutes against three different people and see how well he stands up. But he's done a great job staying out of foul trouble. Give Thad Mata a lot of credit for the way he's game-planned in that regard. He's played all but two minutes, and he has only one foul. Now, we looked it up during the break. He has seven games this year of at least 35 minutes of action, led by a 39-minute game against Northwestern. 
So he has gone much of the way a number of times and their hopes rest on his massive shoulders. Georgia the Peach State tonight we celebrate a game that began with a peach basket. And you look at the biggest difference when it comes to baskets Billy at two for 14 from three Ohio State is going to have to help Odin out with some perimeter shooting. Got eight on the shot clock coming out of the break and Brewer knows it puts it up back of the rim long board Butler quickly to Conley. Other side he goes and every time there's a timeout Odin comes out fresh you see that when he catches he will throw it quickly but he will not he was held that time. That's going to be on Horford now he has three. You see Spates two, is in the two, ball two on Horford. Jim Spates is in the ball game again. Billy Donovan going with this. You know, it, it's a, a, almost a reversal. We'll see the grab here by Horford, knowing that if Odin gets this ball, he puts it in easily. The third foul, and that's going to be again with Ohio State. Jim, in 1962, Ohio State came in the championship as the number one team. Cincinnati had beaten them a year before, and a guy by the name of Paul Hold from Cincinnati was 11 for 18, 22 points, 19 rebounds, the MOP. It reminds me of what Odin's doing tonight against the number one team. And his man guarding him that night was the great Jerry Lucas. So uh, it has been done before, and Odin's putting on quite a show. Own action now by Florida. Conley. He's been quiet since the early going at two of their first three baskets. Nothing since. And a foul outside. And that one is on Brewer. His first. Yeah, Harris really surprised him there, but instead of taking the jump shot, powered on by for the inside shot. Known primarily as a pull-up jump shooter. Here's the 2-3 zone again. Steps up, come inside, and he'll be heading to the line. He is really amazing how he uses that body, and he can go right or left hand. And that one on Spates, his second Thursday on UCSI. Fasten your seatbelt for a case of road rage Vegas style. You don't want to miss the new CSI Thursday on CBS America's number one network. So Conley with one more coming. Jim's had such an incredibly great tournament that uh, tremendous game he played against Xavier 11 points in overtime in that ball game with his buddy on the bench with the five fouls. Of course he and his buddy they haven't lost in the postseason Billy in so long when you take into account their three state titles at Lawrence North Indiana state titles to go back four years since they lost any kind of postseason game. Side space. Oh, that is a shot that Ohio State never ended. Bagmata turns around and said, Where did that come from? Never expected that shot. Again, the 2 3 zone. Just trying to keep now Horford out of more foul trouble. Lewis for a jump shot, but he's over here with Brewer. He ought to get on the other side. Get on the side with a smaller defender. Conley, good head fake, goes inside, and it's Brewer. Brewer comes down to help out and takes it away from Odin. Odin never really had a handle on it. And Humphrey, that one rattles out. Space gets it back. And Odin crashes for it. Lewis wants to run. Space probably should have brought that one back out, Jim, gained the possession. Lewis in the paint. Nice comeback here by Ohio State. They're looking like they're solid. This is a team, Jim, as you pointed out, has been behind by big margins in this NCAA tournament and has not given in. They're they putting pressure on right now, and they have not done it with great perimeter shooting, so that's yet to come, maybe. They have mastered the second half comeback. They have come back four times in the second half to win in this tournament alone, including 17 down to Tennessee and 11 down to Xavier. Orford. Oh, Odin. They got to count it. it? Well, they shouldn't. I think that was still on the way up. And you see what Odin's doing. He's playing a one man zone, no matter if it's man to man or zone defense. He's going to play right down inside. What do you think? I think that that was a good block. I think that he went up whatever height they needed to pick that one off. The ball was on the way up. You see, Noah is down still. Four points, three fouls. That's the second whistle on Harris. So Horford 
And they come back, the Buckeyes, with Othello Hunter, 6'9", junior, out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Has been playing basketball all that long, although he was raised in ACC country. He preferred bagging groceries with friends at a local supermarket there in Winston-Salem. And then finally, his junior year in high school, he got involved in hoops and loved it. And he's uh, been coming on this season. Another big presence inside for the Buckeyes. He had two early fouls in this game. Back to man to man goes Florida. See if they get the ball to Odin. Spates on him. A little high low action. There's the foul inside. Number three on Spates coming. And Billy Donovan wanted to trade fouls, but he's getting everything called one way. He can't believe it. <laughs> now, you know what? What in a situation like this, Jim, you start to do as a coach, you start working the referees. How come it's only one way? See if you can't pick up a cheap one. Not to intimidate, but try to get their attention. Look at Lewis. How far out is that? Too far. And Horford skies. Odin just a little off on the timing with his jump. And Odin late getting back down the court. He's about to get the under 12 whistle to get a breather. And that's tipped by Conley. And they'll go to the benches. And Jim Nance and Billy Packer here at the national championship game. Florida trying to go back to back. Trying to become the first since Duke. 91-92. Trying to find its special place in history is the only starting five to win back to back titles. And the Gators up nine. They led by 11 at halftime. It's Green. Jim, there's the shot that's available and it'd be available for Green or Humphrey. Nice move, but Horford can't get it to drop. He'd like to have that one back. Again, Odin owning the inside. He's got 11 rebounds. That's because he's now out there playing to help out on the jump shooter, so the jump shooter ought to be getting the ball and shooting more. Hasn't been the usual game we've seen out of Conley, is it? No. Maybe because he wants to keep things clear on the inside for his partner. Oh, there he goes. Oh, oh, oh. oh right good call, two. James. Yes. The young man knows how to play. That time, Odin was out the top of the key instead of being down the low post, so Conley took advantage of the room. Really, that's his first basket since three minutes into the game. Reach in coming up, and that'll be the third on Conley if it's on him. No, it's going to be on Lewis. Lewis. Yep. Ooh, Conley looked. He was a bit skittish about it. Well, what happened to Lewis? The same thing happened to Harris down on the other end. They didn't expect Brewer to go ahead and take that one all the way in right into Odin's face. Noah back on the floor. That was Lewis's second. Spate sits. Now, this is going to have to be Noah time, Jim. He sat on the bench a lot. He's got to be completely rested. Part of Billy Donovan's strategy with a 10 minute mark now. Odin has not been out of the game in the second half. Played 18 minutes in the first half. Noah, as we know, has got a lot of energy and can run. Let's see if they try to get him moving up and down the court. He's only taken three shots in this game. Made one. There's Humphrey. Firing again. But a good defense by Butler. You got to go ahead and play him for the jump shot. Nice pump fake by Humphrey. Gets the lead back up to 10. Seems like every time Ohio State gets it down within that one basket working room, a dagger shot comes out. Oh, another nice fake. Oh. Drive in, same move that worked last time, not this one. And it's knocked out by Odin. Little jab step fake that time by Connolly. He can go right or left. He is really a load to try to guard when he's got to clear out. Gator starting five on the floor. It's green. Where's he going? No, no place to go. Nope, that's stuck. Lewis. Pass Brewer. Hunter inside. Blocked by Horford. Second try. No. Odin trying to keep it alive. And Horford comes Beautiful away play. With it. Here we go. Back to Horford. Oh, what a great play by Horford. Super hustle on his part. Wow, after a couple of close range misses by the Buckeyes. I say a, a fresh Odin gets that ball, Jim. Conley in. And a foul this time. And it's on Horford. Now he has three. Good dish, but Horford made that play with tremendous hustle. And as I said, Odin has got to be wearing down a little bit, or he might have been able to get that rebound. He had decent position. Conley a little sh shaken up by that play. He'll shoot a pair. 
His third. Horford. Coach Thad Monop digging in. Kneeling, watching. And the foul situation. Ohio State not in any danger. Remember, Conley had a couple of quick ones in that first half. Four Gators with three. Jim Conley of all Big Ten tournament, as we know, and, and uh, on that all freshman team, he was the MOP of the South region, leading that team in two great ball games he played there. Back in. Nice wow. alley. Reaches in from the floor. Back to Odin. There's Conley being able to get so low to the floor. Butler puts up the three. Huge. Tipped up Hunter. No. He's had a couple of close tries that just aren't falling. There's Brewer's versatility again, being able to get that rebound among the big guys. Green to the corner. Humphrey. Right. Didn't even have it in his hands. Richard. Fouled on the way, and that basket counts. That'll be the second on Odin. That was a fatigue foul, Jim. Odin standing there, no longer as fresh as he was. And the rebound is captured right in front of him. Richard, much fresher, able to get it back in. Number two on him. I wonder if Thad Mata is going to take a chance. Give Odin just about two minutes here. I realize he's behind, but the big guy needs a, just a break. He's been going up against three men all night long, three good players. Ivan Harris checks in, but it's not for Odin, it's for Hunter. That shot of Humphreys from the corner just glanced the very side of the backboard. You know when he got possession of the ball, Jim, as he was releasing it, yeah. he really didn't have it in his hands when he went up for the shot. Has Richard been a factor for this team? We got about six men in the SEC. How many teams does he start for, huh? Maybe every one, <laughs> except this one. He had 17 in the first round win, 16 against the Bruins. Lighty, fresh, and he shows it. What a difference when you've got a fresh set of legs. And Lighty, who was such a factor on green in the Georgetown game, played a super game. Green, last minute gives it up. It's right to Butler. He slips up ahead. Conley, lob, Odin, not able to get it. He was off balance. Right back, and instead will shoot two. You know, I can't say enough about how hard Odin's working. He's got a champion's heart, this kid. Still only 18 years of age, although he may look a little older than that, but he is showing some heart tonight. Just picked up the fourth foul on Noah. So a big one there. You can relive all of the great moments and game highlights or replay any game from the NCAA tournament with NCAA March Madness on demand. It's free at NCAAsports.com slash March Madness on demand. You say facially he maybe looks a little older. His mother was telling us that she's had to produce his birth certificate so often. And there is his mother, Zoe, and his brother, Anthony. She's had to produce the birth certificate so often for like AAU competition sure. and other things that it's tattered and in all wrinkled from all that handling. <laughs> that might have got to take the time out. Special lady though, her son and the Buckeyes gonna take a timeout. They're down 11 as they were at the half. Jim, this would be a huge foul except for one thing. Billy Donovan has three guys to work with. You can see Noah reach it. Look at him pull his hand back quickly, hoping he didn't pick up the fourth, but he was caught. Buckeyes showing a little backcourt pressure here coming out of this last timeout called by Ohio State. Well, Hodge has got a tough responsibility here now. Conley is going to be low to the floor, and he's a good stealer. There it is. Conley then almost sideswiped by Hodge. That was a move that you anticipated on the simple reason. Conley, Jim, it's amazing how low to the floor he can play. And Hodge not experienced. Billy Donovan got caught there against that press and couldn't get Green back in the ball game. But Conley, he plays so low to the floor, both offensively and defensively, you just can't use your crossover dribble against him. Great job by this young guy. One and one coming up for Conley. It's not like Hodge doesn't have any quickness either, but he retreats to the bench. And one more coming for Conley. Well, what that is, Jim, is that you're not used to a guy that can be that low to the floor with his hands. It, it is amazing how how he can get down there I and mean, sometimes when he dribbles his hands are just a matter of inches away from the ball and the floor. His mom and dad 
Mike and Renee. Here it is again. Everybody running away. The ball needs to be thrown over the top of those people in the backcourt like that. You're not going to dribble past Conley and Lewis. Ohio State hanging in there but not able to mount a serious charge. It's just not hitting from the perimeter. They've missed their last nine from three. And there's a block by Odin. Second time, though, a block goes right back to Horford. This is huge. Humphrey huge. Buries the shot. And Jim, they did not have but eight seconds to go in the shot clock. There he is again, wide open. The NCAA tournament's greatest three point shooter gets an open look. Conley with the floater. Humphrey has four from the perimeter in this game, four of seven. Meanwhile, Buckeyes again having a hard time to hit any of them tonight from outside. Better get this ball over half court. Over two seconds to spare. Humphrey didn't want any part of Conley on the dribble, though. Another little pick and roll. Seven minutes to go in the championship game, and the lead is 10. Remind everybody, Odin is not in foul trouble and has not been out this half. We were all there this time. Picked up by Lighty. He's got Lewis ahead. Uncontested. Billy Donovan may be thinking time out here. His team is in some serious trouble against this press. That Mata urging the officials that, hey, they've got to kind of make a little better effort to get the ball back in play after the made basket. Well, if the official puts it down on the floor, that five-second count would start. There's Green weaving through, splitting, and coming back out. Well, it was a big gamble to do that. I'd get the ball out of whoever Conley's guarding, get it out of his hands. Now, Odin's going to pick up another one. It's going to be his third. Might be Lighty. He raised his hands, Jim. No, it's on Odin. Is it? Number three. 6.17 to go. Well, you look at Brewer and Green, they both have not scored in the second half, Billy, but Humphrey's knocked down three threes, nine and a half. Jim, let me say something about Humphrey. So far in the final four, four Final Four games he has played, he is 18 for 35 from three. He is averaging over 16 points a game, the leading scorer of all these outstanding Florida players. So if you're Ohio State, particularly at this stage of the game, I think you've got to put Lighty on him and say, do not leave him no matter what happens. Do not let him get off a shot. Odin has picked up a couple of fouls here in just the last minute, so he's up to three now. He has gone 32 of 34 minutes in this one. And the other thing is, if you're green, do not put this ball on the floor with your dribbling. Try to give it up. Don't let Conley, the leading stealer in the Big Ten, get his hands in there. Now Horford back it in, back it in. And Odin rejects. And Richard. This time and the there's Buckeyes. Conley's hands. It's Lighty on the floor. And now a tie up the arrows going back to Florida. Every time Odin's made a block, his team has not come away with it. Well, Richard being fresh was able to get to that ball. But again, Jim Conley with those hands reaching in there. You don't want to try to get cute with your dribble when he's in the area. So the arrow to the Gators with 551. Nine seconds. So who do you want to guard? Make sure Humphrey doesn't get off a shot if you're Ohio State. And if you're Florida, see if you can't set a screen for him. And towel off the Final Four logo. Or it's good hustle by Green sticking his nose down in that pile because uh, Ohio State had a fast break opportunity. And all of these little breaks help Odin, Jim. I mean, he has not been out of the game in this second half. Just think of what happened on Saturday. He was out of the ball game in a minute and 30 seconds. Tonight he has been able to hang in there. Actually now well what they're reviewing here reviewing. Did, did Ohio State get possession and so then the shot clock would go back to the 35. That's what they're reviewing right here. Doesn't appear to. In other words if they feel that Ohio State got possession and then there was a tie up the shot clock would go back because I think it was down to about like eight seconds. I see this right here. Do you say Ohio State has possession here and then loses possession. What would you say. I, I wouldn't think so. 
I think it should stay at nine seconds. I don't think they get another 35 because I don't think Ohio State clearly had possession. They're going to keep it. They're going to keep it at nine yep. seconds. I so think that was a rule, good call. Rule they never had. Ohio State and Lighty never gained possession of it. Nine seconds, plenty of time for dribble drive, but Conley's on green, so that's going to be tough to do. Here's the screen. Horford out high on the screen. Now back to him. With two on the shot clock. Driving in. Laying it in. What a shot. Break down defensively there. Harris had to do a better job staying with him. Huge shot by Horford. Horford has 13 tonight. Odin wants it. He gets it. Turn around. Yes. He called for that ball right away. No time to double down on him there. Green is insistent on bringing this ball up the court with a dribble. Tough pass, and he was on the line. No, no, what I think happened here, he tried to call a timeout, falling out of bounds. Well, that, they ruled that he was on the line. I saw the line. signal. Yep. yep, good call, Jim. I didn't call it. I just, oh, no. I just observed it. Let's see this. He <laughs> comes down on yes. the line. Yep. yep. So, 5-15. We've had eight, Billy, eight double-digit comebacks in this tournament. Two of them by the Buckeyes. Comebacks to win. Can they do it again? Jump ball right back to Odin. He draws another foul. Is that Horford? Let's see. I, I think it is Horford. I don't think Richard was close enough to him to commit that foul. He tried to make the interception. It's on Richard. Yeah, the, Flo the Florida players are saying, how come the big guy's getting all the calls? That's the fourth on Richard. And well, 10 team fouls, so they're double bonus the rest of the way. Yeah, but Billy Donovan intended for him to get four or five fouls in this ball game. He wanted Noah Horford out of foul trouble. He has played now 15 minutes without a break in this half. 18 minutes in the first half. Sensational job on Odin's spot. Got 22 points and 11 rebounds. I do not understand why Green is dribbling the ball up the court. It's a six-point game. It's Green, left open. Oh, and another backbreaker three. Seems like every time that's the answer, this well-balanced Florida team can hurt you in so many ways. Green's first basket of the second half, and it's a big one. Now Lewis driving on to her. In the basket, they're going to count it. The basket counts and Lewis to the line after the foul call on Corey Brewer, his second. Lewis Jim, who's had a tremendous tournament. We talked about his great game against Xavier, 27 points in that one, plus that incredible three that put that game into overtime. This is the basket there. Boy, it had great success at the line during the tournament before that one. He was, well, he, he was 28 for 29 coming into this game. Shows you how well he was shooting. Unable to finish the three-point play. Now Richard, he wanted it. Working on Odin. And shows quite a move, Chris Richard. Well, he used that big upper body, and Odin really couldn't get away. Billy Donovan just jumping up and down, asking his team maybe to go zone. Yes, they did. They went zone. With that mighty open. He wanted the three, and that's short. They went zone, and Brewer didn't see the call. He was man-to-man. -man. Florida really dodged one there. They have now, Billy, at Ohio State, missed 10 consecutive shots from three. And that's been the difference in this game when you look at what Florida has been able to do from the outside. It's a good call by Green right here. Get Richards to set the screen. That's a good move. Richards should go out and do it again, or here Horford's going to do it, but they should be doing it on Odin's man. Five on the shot clock. Horford on the run, and he does it again. He beat the shot clock already once just a few moments ago, and he does it again. Now this clock is really important. Ohio State's got to push this ball up the floor. It's a tired club. Conley's got to speed things up a little bit here. Gator fans rise. They sense the kill. Conley tries to quiet them. Long with the shot. Porter high with the board. Gators off and running. Over to Green. He'll come inside. Uncontested. Oh, he misses the shot. Out. And Horford is right there for the rebound. But, Jim, you have a very tired team for Ohio State right now. That's the difference. Well, you can tell just the way Green was able to drive in, and then no one was there to get the rebound. Absolutely. 
Again, just a drives by Conley. Mighty Horford, disinterested. Horford's got the size advantage. The player's at his feet. A whistle first. Is the call going to be where Horford goes to the line? Looks that way. Each team has three timeouts remaining. The second half, Ohio State has not made a three. Urban Meyer, Jim Tressel. They met January 8th. One's laughing and one isn't, kind of like January the 8th. Huh? That's right. Another football coach is here. That's right. The brilliant coach of the New England Patriots, Bill Belichick. He knows a little something about repeating. Back to back and three out of four. He's a very close friend and a huge admirer of Billy Donovan's. And Billy Donovan has leaned on him for advice in regard to that repeat. He's also leaned on Pat Riley. And the conclusion both of them gave him, Jim, was go with your gut. That was about repeating. I think he may go be going back after this ball game to talk to those two guys and see if he goes with his gut on another decision. Well, every indication he's told us all weekend is his gut. He's telling him it's all about Florida. And all he's all told us he hadn't thought about it at all either. Yeah, There's Brewer again. This is a cheap foul. Who's got Richard? No need to commit that foul. The B. Odin Brewer had a wide open rebound. And here comes Noah in fresh. For Richard, that's it. Yep. He has fouled out. But and he's a senior. That's the end of his career at Florida. As Billy Donovan told me this week, he's been a winner from high school on. He went to school there in Lakeland, Florida, where he played with Rashad Anderson. Remember him from UConn? Oh, and they won a state title. Played in more games than any Florida player. And really had a sensational game here over the weekend against UCLA and played well tonight and did exactly what Billy Donovan wanted him to do. Look what he did, Billy, in the tournament Absolutely. from the field. 22 of 26. That's so, fair, huh? That's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly from your sixth man who you're counting on primarily for defense and rebounding. Now Odin, again, double bonus the rest of the way, so two. And that one rattles out. And, you know, Brewer won't get credit for that rebound because of the foul. But how about he, how he has been rebounding on the defensive glass in this second half? He's got eight for the game. Second one goes for Odin. 75-63 with 220. 23 points now for Odin. And a double up on Green, able to escape it as Noah's back in. Double again. Somebody's got to be open inside. We've got two men on the ball outside. There it is. Oh, it right back to him. Ball tip out to Conley, and the Buckeyes come out with it. How about a three? Somebody's got to start making some threes here. Lewis, not the place to go. Follows it up, though, and Horford got a piece of it. And you can see Odin is tired, Jim. He just can't get to the ball down on the inside in the offensive glass like he did earlier. That's a big empty trip. Coming in, it's Brewer. Over to Noah. I thought Odin first might pick up a foul, but they didn't call it on him. And there's Christine Donovan. And we talked to Billy this week. He says, if you have a chance, just please tell the story about my wife and how she's allowed me to be able to accomplish everything I have with all that tutoring that goes in with this young family, the carpooling, the appreciation. He says it never gets expressed enough. And I know Thad Mata said the exact same thing. With the great salute presentation on Thursday night about their MVPs, their MOPs, most outstanding players in their homes. And there is Joe Kim's mother, former Miss Sweden. And her boy won the MOP last year and is going to be part of a repeat this year, it looks like. Conley spinning away from him. Brilliant move by Conley. Timeout, Mata. 77-65, up 12, 121 to go. The Florida Gators, it would be interested to see the context with which you'll put, if they finish it off here, back-to-back -back championships in this day and age of college basketball, Billy. So difficult was the commitment that these kids made last April the 7th to say we want to come back and do it again, but great steal by Conley. Don't give up on the Buckeyes yet. Conley, steal, and a layup, and it's 10. And Jim, what they have got to do is to throw the ball over that initial defense, get it down on the other end of the court. Noah's father loving it too.
Ed Mata has one timeout left. His brother Greg has already won a championship here in Georgia. He's a coach at North Cobb Christian High School. They won the state title in their division, and Thad was hoping that maybe it'd bring a little luck to him down here in Georgia as well. They break the press this time. Jim, what Florida has to do is throw over the top of this press, and they're going to start the foul to put them on the line to get this ball back. But they can throw over the top of the press and get an easy layup. Because what Ohio State's doing now is basically playing five men from the half court backwards. It'll be a one and one coming. That's the ninth. So after this, everything else, two shots. Horford a one and one, five of six on the night. He's looked really firm on those free throws this evening. Plus, he's hit a couple of outside jumpers and a couple of shots on the run. Yep. 18 points, 12 rebounds. And that one roll. spins out. And he's coming off a huge rebounding performance against the Bruins. 17 boards, and they were plus 17 as a team. Thanks to him in that game. Shots have got to go up quicker now for Ohio State. They're taking too much time. Got to take shots and let Oden go get the ball. Cook. Noah able to get a hand on it and snap it down, and another foul. And the Gator fans are starting to sense it. There's Billy Donovan's father. That was wife Christine. I was kidding him before the game, Jim. He was so serious, and he said, "What do you think tonight?" And I said, "Well, you've got the better team. If you had a kid that could coach worth a darn, <laughs> you might be all right." He just wanted to laugh at me. He's a tremendous man, and of course, had a great college career of his own at yes, Boston he did. College. He was a great teacher of Billy early on, and and you know the story of Rick Pitino getting Billy, who was not much of a player at Providence, and getting to dedicate himself as a player. It's quite a story. Two for two by Noah. Back up to 13. That'll shoot that ball. Butler. And finally, they hit one in the second half. Now three for 21 for the game from outside. Reach in on Odin, number four. But he was able to go almost the distance tonight, Billy. There's Sydney. Green on the left. Great UNLV player. It's a great moment for parents who Tory see their Green's kids dead. reach yep. such incredible heights. There is Torian. You know, Jim, when you think about Billy and, and, and his message to his team this year, share the wealth. Well, they did that. 5,000 point scores, five guys in double figures. It'll be a different path. And just think about last year's NCAA tournament as we watched them march through and this year. So certainly a different path. And then he said, enjoy the moment. And they're 34 seconds away from reaching that enjoyment. Point number three that he made early this year. Now Horford's father, Tito, also no surprise, all smiles. Conley dishes Odin. Two more for Odin. And Odin will be the MOP of this Final Four, Jim, on a losing team, obviously. You think so? Yes, I do. I think it might be Horford. You do. I think it's Odin. You know, Billy, when you start talking about back to back, and again, you take all those magnificent wooden years, but they never had the same five on the floor, the same starting five the next year. This is history. It's never happened in college basketball. But, and you, you know, I, I, when we first started researching, we said, with what college basketball is today, and sometimes it's, it's a short business for some players. They're here and gone we may never see it again in fact we never have seen it you know Jim the last SEC team that won back to back is Kentucky in 48 and 49 with Adolph Rupp the fabulous five but it wasn't the same five so you know even in that particular case it didn't work out just think about that no SEC team has gone back to back since 1948 49 wow I mean, there's some real history these kids are putting on tonight how about the fact Florida had not even been to an NCAA tournament till 20 years ago right you think about all of the Ohio State was in the very first one back in 39 won it in 60 tried to repeat lost in the final 61 back again in the final in 62 yep. not until 87 did they ever make a visit and I want to say one thing about all the dads because Lee Humphrey's father is here tonight he's a middle school teacher back there in Merrillville, Tennessee, and the man at the line, Corey Brewer, wanted me to pass along his best to his dad, Ellis. They know him as Pee Wee. He had a leg amputation back in November, three follow-up surgeries. He could not be more proud, I'm sure, of his son, and his son feels exactly the same about his father. Shot by Conley. 
making some threes now but much too little too late and Thad Mata does not want to foul this game is over they have done it. they're going to let him go Florida takes its place in history back to back and unforgettable. Some year for the Gators, huh, Jim? National champs in football, national champs in basketball.